So now that we have a pattern, and this works for any pattern that you might make on this, we need to know how to print it. So first we have to move it into details, and to do that you're going to go down here to detail, and we're going to click this work piece tool. So we're going to, this plus sign with a pattern piece picture, because we're going to add a pattern piece. So right now um, mine's actually on the neckline, so we'll do the neckline first. So I click that. And in a clockwise motion, I'm going to click all the points the whole way around the neckline. And when I have all my points clicked, I hit the enter button on my keyboard. And I'm going to drag this to the side and just make sure my outline looks okay. And it does. So I am going to hit okay. And now up here, if I go to details, that neckline is now showing up. So now let's go ahead and add the bodice as well as the sleeves. All right, so I'm going to click that Add Work Piece tool, and I'm going to do the V-neck. I reshaped my neckline for the V-neck, so I'm going to click on this V-neck curve. I'm going to click on the curve itself, not the points. So I'm going to click on the curve, and then I'm going to click to the arm point, down to this point, and then I'm going to click on this curve. If I don't click on the curve itself, it'll just square out all the points, and it won't curve. Then I'll come down here to the bottom, finish out with the high hip. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Once again, I'm going to drag this to the right and make sure my piece looks okay. If when you were making your curve, if you did it counterclockwise this direction, it's going to look like that or like that. So if it doesn't look right, you need to go to your curves and look at the direction. So A13 to 9. 13 goes up to 9 in the correct direction, and this goes in the correct direction. If it's not in the correct direction, just right-click on it and hit reverse, and it'll change the direction of that curve for you. All right, so I'll hit OK. And now that piece is on here as a work piece as well. I'm going to go back to draw. Let's do the sleeve. Add work piece tool. I can start anywhere I want, so I'll start at a corner. And I'm going to click on this curve. I'm going to click on this curve. Over, down, and back to the start. Hit enter on my keyboard. I'm going to double check it. That looks good. Hit OK. I'm going to hit save. So now in details, I have all three of my pieces. So this is where we can add seam allowances, we can add labels, all sorts of information. So to do this, let's go ahead and start with the neckline, and I'm going to hit right-click on the piece and hit Options. So now I can go to Seam Allowance right here, and I'm just going to turn that on by clicking Seam Allowance, that little box next to it. So I have an automatic seam allowance set in mine, which you can do by going to File. I'll show you in a second. So mine automatically is going to add a half-inch seam allowance. If I hit, let me get this all in screen. If I hit Apply, you can see that it's now added the seam allowance. And one of the things I love about this is it still shows you the sewing line inside of the seam allowance, which is great when you're doing tailoring work. Um, okay, so I'll just hit OK. On this piece, however, I don't actually want seam allowance on these two sides. So the first thing I need to do is make sure there's points there, and there are. All four of these points are showing up on the pattern. So I'm going to right-click and go back to Options, go to Seam Allowance. I'm just going to drag this just enough to the right that we can see these numbers. So this is C and C2. So over here in my seam allowance, if I hit C, since we're going in clockwise, before that, I don't want any seam allowance. So before, instead of the current seam allowance, I'm going to put zero. And then I'm going to hit apply. So now this is C2. If I go to ne node C2, after that, I don't want any seam allowance. So instead of current, I'm going to hit zero, hit apply. And now I don't have any seam allowance on this side. I can do the same thing on this side. And so this is C1. I don't want any seam allowance after it. And on C3, I don't want any before. And I'll hit OK, and there we go. So let's go ahead and add seam allowance to the sleeve neck. So go ahead and right-click it, Options, Seam Allowance, turn it on. And again, I'm happy with that half an inch, so I'll hit OK. 
Now, if you want something other than the seam allowance that's showing up in yours, you go to File, Pattern Proper, or Preferences, Preferences. <laughs> um, go to, I think it's in Pattern. Yes, Pattern. Okay, right here, Seam Allowance, Default Value. You can put whatever you want in there. Half an inch, three quarters inch, five eighths inch, whatever you would like. And then just hit OK. All right, so now let's do the bodice front. I'm going to right click, options, seam allowance. Let's turn that on. Okay. So now I'm going to cut this on the fold. So I don't want seam allowance on this side. Now there is a point down here in this corner, but I need one here. So I actually have to go back to draw. And let's make sure I'm on the bodice. So I need to add this point in there. So I am going to hit insert node, it's like this chain button with a plus sign, and I'm going to click it. And I'm going to add it to piece detail. Okay. Because I haven't named it yet. <laughs> Alright, now right click options, and you will see that it's not showing up on this pattern because it's crossed out here. So right click it, uncheck excluded, hit apply, and now it's there. So now I can go to the seam allowance. So this is my point high hip, and that's A13. So if I go to high hip in a clockwise motion, after it, I don't want seam allowance. So after, turn that to zero, hit apply, and then this is A13, so our node, we're going to drop down to A13, and before it, we don't want seam allowance. Zero, apply, there we go, we'll hit OK. So now all of our seam allowances are in. Now we can also add labels and information about the pattern itself at this point. So let's just go ahead and start with the neckline again. So right click options. So we're back in this same screen. Um, we will go to labels at this point. And the first thing we want to do is edit the label. And we can create a label at this point. Now, I have a bunch saved already. I, not a bunch, too, <laughs> that I use every time. But what you're going to do is you have to click this green plus button to add something onto your label. And instead of empty, we'll highlight that. And we want it to say, let's see, um, how about piece letter? And then let's add another one. And instead of empty, it'll say uh, piece name. Add another one, and this one will be the quantity. Add another one, and this will be, um, let's see, annotation. If I want, I could even add one that says the pattern name, but I need pattern file name. I always get this confused because there's two of them. You want pattern file name, and whatever I have saved this whole file as, that will show up. So pattern file name. And I can grab these and drag them around and change the order. So we'll start with file name, and then the letter, the name, the quantity, and the annotation. So now, what I would recommend so that you don't have to do that every time, hit the Save button up here. And we'll just call this um, YouTube <laughs> Example Label. You can call it just like standard label. You can call it um, specific labels for different things, like cut on fold label, whatever you want to say. All right, and then we'll hit OK. All right, so now this is where we're filling out that information. So as the neckline, I want this to be piece C, and we'll say neckline. Um, we only want to cut one, and the annotation, I don't need any comments on the neckline. Um, so I'll just hit OK. Now, it's not showing up yet, but the information is in there. If you go back into Options and Labels, instead of exiting out, you need to click this Labels tab. And then you need to say that the detail label is visible, otherwise you won't see it. And then hit OK. And now it's here. And now you can actually drag that little box around. There's a teeny little box in the corner. And if you grab it, you can change the size of all this. So now you can see it says basic T bodice examples, which is what we named the entire file. And then it also says piece C, that's the neckline, and I want to cut one. Let's go ahead and do the sleeve next. So right click on it, options, go to labels, edit template, and now we can hit open. And we can just open this, and it already puts everything in there. The sleeve is going to be piece letter B. 
sleeve, cut two, and I don't have any notes that I need to put on this either. Go to that labels tab and it needs to be visible. You can make it bigger from here if you'd like, if that's easier for you. Or again, you can drag it around once it's in here. And then here we go, seam oh, labels, edit, open, labels, detail, and this is a bodice front, and it just dawned on me that I did not um, create the bodice back on this, so we'll have to add that in real quick. Um, the annotation, I would put cut on fold, but you can also add the placement into it if you'd like. Okay, and now it has everything I need. I will go back on my own and add the back of the bodice onto this. But any pattern piece, this is how you do this. And these are kind of the options that you have. So I'm going to save that. So now if I have everything I need, and obviously I still have to add the back, but I'll do that the exact same way I've done all of these, um, then we need to print it. And the way we do that is by clicking on Layout. And when you click Layout, this is automatically going to pop up. Now I have a 24-inch printer. It prints 24 inches wide on a roll, and it is the greatest thing I have ever bought in terms of sewing, other than obviously my sewing machine and my serger. I, it is one of the things that I would never not use it now that I have one because I do create my own patterns and it saves me easily an hour for every single pattern of having to cut it out and tape it together. Um, so for me, I would literally click this drop down and hit roll 24 inch and it prints on a roll. It just comes out all in one piece, ready to go. If that's not the case for you, um, you're going to do custom. So you're going to come into this width and height, and you're going to kind of guess how wide it might need to be. Let's just start with like 36 by 36, um, and you're just going to have to play with it. So what you're going to do over here is make sure this does not say divide into strips. It will literally cut everything into strips. You do not want that on. These you can mess with. This changes the layout a little bit, but there's no particular method to it that I can find. So I usually don't mess with those unless I'm having trouble getting it to save paper. Um, I always click save length of the sheet so it's not super long. I don't want it to print out an extra two feet if I don't need it. You can change these gap widths and shift set onset, shift offset length if you want as well. I'll show you in a second why you would want to mess with that. But let's just start with okay. So we'll guess two sizes and hit okay. So now it's thinking and it's positioning these. So it's all on here, but maybe not in the best way. And this is the one part that this application um, will give us a little bit of struggle. And that's where we kind of have to start guessing different numbers. Let's say 22 inches by 36 height. Um, and again, we'll keep everything else the same. Hit OK. It's thinking. That's much better. I still wish this was straightened out a little because that would save us a little more paper, but this is much better than it was. You can mess with it further if you'd like. Um, this is also where messing with these numbers can possibly change what that looks like. Let's hit OK and see what happens. And there, it's basically about the same thing anyways. Um, so once you're happy with however this looks, you hit this pink arrow button, export original layout. All right, and for this, for mine, I export as a PDF file because that's what my printer needs. I email it a PDF and it prints out. If you are printing this on a home printer, you need PDF tiled files. And you're going to save it. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to add YouTube on here just so I can find it easily. Hit OK and it's saved. So all I have to do is open my computer folder and I do not want downloads. I want to go into, so this is in my um, computer. <laughs> it's in this layouts file. So if you go to your computer, sorry, it's always kind of hard to find the first time. Um, go to your drive, let me think. You need to go to your file where it says your name. Um, and then we're going to go into Seamly 2D, and you want layouts. 
All right, so these are layouts I've printed lately. Um, so let's see, this one that says YouTube, again, that was just to help me find it easier. I'm going to click that and it opens. Let me make the screen smaller so you can actually see what's happening. All right, so this, and I'm going to zoom out a little. This is what it's actually going to look like printed. So it makes these tiled files that it's got, literally, if you look at this, it's got grid numbers on it, so you know which order it goes on, the page number, the cut lines, how to tape this together, literally everything that you need to easily tape this together. If you're going to do this, if you don't already have one already, I would highly recommend a good paper cutter the one with the long arms. I can put a link to the one I use from when I do print patterns because if I use other people's patterns online, I still have to print them this way. Um, but that'll save you so much time because as you can see, these cut lines are all the same. So you can stack them and just cut all the edges off and tape it together. But at this point, all you do is print it. I hope this was super helpful and has you excited to start making some stuff and getting your own patterns going. I would love to see what you're making. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. I will respond um, or send me pictures of what you've been making with this. I hope that you subscribe and see some of the more videos so you get some more inspiration on things you can make. Thanks. Bye.